first and second kank. And Riemann proves in particular there are exactly G is equal to the first kind. First kind means there are no poles. Second kind and repeat poles. So this is the first of his results. But now he goes beyond. And again, as I say, he puts the problem completely upside down. People would have thought of starting from well-defined meromorphic functions and surface and integrating them. He does exactly the reverse. He starts from the integrals and says, now what are the functions, the meromorphic functions? Well, there are the functions with which you arrive on both sides. If they are defined on the whole of S, they must take the same value. In other words, they have no, they have no periods. So he defines meromorphic functions of the surface as a billion integral of the second kind with zero periods. Then he shows that if you take any two of these, they are always related by an algebraic relation. So he gets back to the original point of view after having gone very far from it, but with considerable enrichment. Because once you have two such functions, let their link by an algebraic relation, any other algebraic uh, meromorphic function is a rational function of, of S and D. This it proves very easily. Furthermore, the choice of S and D is pretty much arbitrary. If you take another choice, you will have another algebraic relation. And how do you get from one to another? Well, S and D are a rational function of S1, D1, and conversely. This is what is called a birational transformation. This was not completely new. Newton, for instance, in the plane, had considered the transformation X prime equal 1 over X, Y prime equal Y over X. This is birational because you can reduce X and Y function of y, x prime, y prime, it changes the degree. Nobody had done anything with this transformation really before Riemann, because nobody had realized that something was attached to that, an invariant number was attached to this transformation, precisely the genus. Two curves, birationally equivalent, that is having Riemann surfaces which are isomorphic as biholomorphically bi isomorphic as the second one to another, correspond to curves which are birationally transformable from one into another. And this is so important that from the days of Riemann until very late in the, 19th, in the 20th century, nobody will do anything anymore except birational geometry. That is, only look at invariance. The old projective geometry is dead at that time, and the people only are interested in birational geometry. That is, the degree and class are not anymore uh, invariants, but the genus two curves in the same genus are considered to be in the same class because they have, well, if they are birationally equivalent, I should say that, of course, the genus is not enough to determine the curve up to isomorphism. Actually, Riemann himself showed that curves of a given genus, or rather isomorphism classes of such curves, depend on parameters, continuous parameters, which he called the moduli, 3G minus 3 of them to the This this was a source of a lot of difficult questions which have only been begun to be solved in our time. Okay, so this is only about half of Riemann's paper on a billion integrals. So you can imagine the wealth of ideas and new methods which are in it. The other half is just as important for uh, inversion of integrals, uh, theta functions, and abelian varieties, and so on, but I won't speak about it. It has had as much influence on the first part on the rest of the United States. So much for Riemann, who unfortunately dies very young at the age of 40 in 1866. And uh, the next period I call development and chaos. Development because, of course, after this fantastic wealth of ideas brought by a single man in a way which was not always perfectly clear, the analysis obviously needed uh, correction. He, Riemann never bothered about singularities always assume that the curves have no singularities, but curves do have singularities, <laughs> and so on, uh, led people in the next period to try to put Riemann's discoveries uh, on a basis which would be understandable and, and correct. Unfortunately, they didn't have the genius of Riemann, and instead of trying to keep in mind his fantastic synthesis of analysis, geometry, algebra, which he obviously had in mind, they split it up in two or three different directions. And during that period, there will be two or three different schools of algebraic geometry who barely understand each other. I will start with the most interesting of, of it, of these 